The first lesson is from the book of Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel in Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to the people, now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you're unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. May the word of God dwell within you. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 34, read responsively. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to, do evil, to erase, erase the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is dear to the brokenhearted, and saves those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. God will keep them all their bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The second lesson, lesson is from Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. Put the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand that evil day. And having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and, and, the, uh, and every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might declare it boldly as I must speak. May the word of God dwell within you. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you o Lord. Lord. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as a living father sent me and I live because of the father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? 
But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the 12, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, did I not choose you, the 12? Yet one of you is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, for he, the one of the 12, was going to betray him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. When I was in seminary, I took a class on Martin Luther and the history of the Reformation. That's the period of time beginning in the 16th century when the paradigm for how people understood their relationship to God and to faith and to the Bible and church completely shifted. In this class, in order to pass this class, we were required to memorize a section of the small catechism, the section concerning the Apostles' Creed. This included not only all three articles of the creed, but also Martin Luther's explanation of each section. While I can't say that I completely value the work of memorization, what I did value was returning to Martin Luther's explanation of the third article of the creed. The third article of the creed concerns the Holy Spirit and the church. It goes like this. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And in the small catechism, following this statement is Martin Luther's explanation. He writes this. I believe that my, by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with the Spirit's gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith, just as the Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. All of this to say, faith is God's business. It does not come from within any of us, but only by the work of the Holy Spirit do we come to faith, come to relationship, come to trust God when all we really want to do is rely on our own understanding? Our Lutheran theology prevents us from making faith inherent to our goodness, to our morals, to our virtue, or anything else for that matter. Faith is God's business. Today's Jesus story clearly shows us 
that keeping faith and following Jesus is hard. Jesus claims to be our bread, true bread that grants life. He invites us to eat him. And all of these claims have been greeted with misunderstanding, confusion, and objection from the crowds and from the religious leaders. But today, today it is Jesus' own disciples, the ones who travel alongside him, who gather up the leftovers of bread and fish, who were rescued from the perilous storm at sea. It is the disciples who now grumble and complain. We might expect grumbling from the Jewish religious leaders, but the disciples? It would appear that the problem is not so much that the disciples have difficulty understanding what Jesus is saying. They understand what he's saying quite well, but they cannot come to believe and follow what Jesus has said. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? I have asked a version of this question a time or two in my own life. I have thrown up my hands and said, Jesus, this is just too hard. I can't follow you there. I can't let go of my anger, my disappointment, my grief, and follow you into the way of compassion and peace and service towards neighbor. I wonder, I wonder how often each one of us finds our place, finds ourselves in that place too, when we just can't. When walking away feels like the only viable option because following Jesus is just too hard. And yet, and yet, despite objections and complaints, Jesus does not back off. Instead, he sharpens the point of his message. He asks, then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? And we might think, we might first think of Jesus ascending into heaven after being raised from the dead, but that is Luke's gospel and we are in John. In John's telling, Jesus returns to the Father by being lifted up on the cross. If the disciples have been scandalized by Jesus telling them to eat his flesh in order to live, what will happen when Jesus goes up by way of the cross? Will they be able to see the glory of God in that place? Will we? Our Jesus story for this morning doesn't give us many options about what following Jesus looks like. According to our story, there are those who believe and who remain with Jesus. There are those who do not believe. There are those who walk away. And then there's the one who betrays. And remember that in the Gospel of John, belief has nothing to do with knowledge or intellect, but everything to do with relationship with God. And when it comes to responding to the relationship that Jesus offers, we are getting a picture of John's worldview. And the options for responding are limited. Either we are in relationship with God or not. Some will choose to walk away from this relationship. There might be some betrayal, belief, unbelief, walking away, betrayal. These are the options laid out by the gospel writer. And I will admit to you that I want more options. But in John's worldview, there are none. 
how will we fare? I suspect not well. We stumble and we grumble too. We argue and try to convince God that our way might be better than God's way. I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come near to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with the Spirit's gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith, just as the Holy Spirit calls and gathers, enlightens and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in one common true faith. It is not by our understanding or strength. It is not by our intellect or wisdom it is not by our will or determination that we come to Jesus, that we come to community. Did I not choose you? Jesus asks. Yes, Jesus, you choose us. You keep us. You feed us. You raise us up with you. You draw us to faith over and over and over again, even when we struggle to lean into this relationship with you, even when we argue and rail against you, you keep us. You raise us up with you. You draw us to faith over and over and over again because you are the word of eternal life. Thanks be to God. I am making myself available on Mondays, no specific time anymore. If you want to call me anytime on Monday, please do, and let's chat. A quick reminder that if you are hospitalized or have upcoming medical procedures or have just needs of spiritual care, please let me know. You are welcome to call my personal cell phone, uh, which is published in the E! News. If it happens to be a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, leave me a voicemail because I check voicemails for pastoral care emergencies. Coffee hour continues this Tuesday, August 24th at 9 a.m. on Zoom. This is an opportunity for community to grow between us, for us to connect and, um, and stay in touch. The Zoom link is posted on our website. Sojourners, that's New Journeys Quilting Group, meets this Thursday, August 26th at 1 p.m. here in the fellowship space. Prayer ministry continues um, under the leadership of Jane Stoss. To request prayer, you can email me or you may um, submit a prayer request online. Oliver has some prayers to lift up, apparently. Sunday morning worship, um, as council continues to re review data and our community, we're slowly making changes. You'll notice we obviously sang this morning, we are slowly wading into that and seeing how it goes. If you have feedback for us, please connect with me or Dave Bubke or any member of council. The worship and hymn planning team meeting has been postponed until next Sunday at 1 p.m. here in the fellowship space. We will be selecting hymns and, and talking about liturgy and worship uh, for October, November, and even as the Advent season. The Christian education team is seeking one or two people to join our team. The purpose of our team is to plan and present relative and um, relevant, excuse me, and informative and challenging Christian education opportunities in order to nurture faith. Um, we are looking for one or two people to join our team, so please connect with me if you are interested. Imagine School in Mesa, which is one of our ministry partners. We are collecting hygiene products for them. There is a bin in the back of the worship space, a gray bin. Um, we're collecting things like toothpaste and toothbrushes, bars of soap, uh, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, even laundry detergent uh, for the families uh, who, um, whose children attend Imagine School in Mesa. 
We are in need of worship volunteers to help set up and run the PowerPoint uh, to read scripture, to greet and support worship, um, and also to uh, tidy our worship space. We have the sign-up sheets for September, October, and November, and December in the back. If you are interested, please uh, sign up for those slots. There is a community blood drive on August 27th and 28th in the city chamber, uh, council chambers at City Hall from 9 to 2 p.m. Uh, masks are required. Uh, you are welcome to sign up online. The Holden Evening Prayer Service, scheduled, at, scheduled on September 9th at 7 p.m., has been postponed due to COVID, rising COVID cases. The planning team is looking for some alternatives uh, if you would participate in, in an online service, let me know. They're looking for feedback. Are there any other announcements for the good of the community? Then I invite you to stand as you are able for the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.